Hi, it's Tony here from the Think to Thrive team. You may be wondering why I am sat on the stairs. Well, first of all, these stairs represent you, your life. And I'm sure all of you out there have dreams, hopes, goals, ambition, career steps, whatever it is that you think of as being in the future. In other words, your success. But you may notice that behind me at the top of the stairs, we have that goal. That represents that peak, that journey to get to the top of where you perceive your success lies, that goal. And then somewhere down the bottom here where I'm sat is where you are at the present moment. Well, let's dig into part two of Neville Goddard's notes on how exactly we can wrap together this idea of having ambition and goals with actually staying present now and just remaining real, if you like, in the moment. Because all spiritual texts talk about the idea that, you know, the illusion that out there in the future is happiness, you only ever find happiness and fulfilment right now where you are. So how do we mingle these two things together? Let's find out in part two. team with part two in this special series of Neville Goddard insights for your motivation, inspiration and desires to reach that goal. First of all, before we start today, um, I want to quickly cover something which I have had to get to grips with during my studying. I'm sure you've read maybe lots of books on spirituality, on manifesting your desires, uh, the great uh, film or book, The Secret, all of those sorts of um, sources of information can be incredibly inspiring. And I've spent a lifetime studying, believe you me, many, many uh, books to try to understand how I can get the balance between having a goal, a desire or a dream, yet still remaining present and spiritual, if you like. First of all, if anybody ever walks up to you and says, I'm a spiritual person, follow me, you can guarantee that the ego is in centre place there. What do I mean by the ego? Whenever we have a thought in our head that imagines, imagines a future scenario as being better than where we are now, or we pity ourselves for where we've come from and we hold that, to, that thought to hold us back, or we think of ourselves as more superior or different or better than somebody else, somehow more advantaged, enlightened maybe, you can guarantee that's the voice of the ego. So whenever you have that mental chatter in your head that separates you from being totally and utterly present where you are now, you can guarantee it's the voice of the ego. Now, my point of growth now as a human being is that I've moved through a life where I've always been obsessed by goals and fulfilling wonderful imaginations that I hold in my head, and they have happened. At this stage in my studying, I'm becoming a lot more aware of the importance of actually remaining present and really getting to grips with the voices that take place in your head. Now, as you move up the... Uh, the ladder, again, this sounds like me uh, uh, coming from the ego again. I know best. It really isn't. I'm just sharing with you awareness so that you two can go away and study. But as you do move up the ladder of um, awareness, as you grow more conscious of what you are and who you are, as you move up that ladder, things keep changing. So you may get to a certain part of the ladder and think, right, that's it. I've got all the information I need now to move ahead to manifest whatever dream I have in my head and to be incredibly happy and fulfilled and everything's good. And then you realise that the moment that happens, another book or another piece of information enters your consciousness, which moves you up to the next step in the ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, this journey never ends. It's continual and it goes on and on. The question is, am I moving up that ladder in the correct way that makes me more 
of a human being more able to serve and reach out and connect with empathy to the world, nature and the people around me? Fundamentally, am I more fulfilled? Am I fulfilling my role as a spiritual being? So, you know, all the time you're having to sort of move up this ladder and just when you may get to a point where you think, that's it, I figured it all out, you, you realise you haven't and there's another piece of learning. So that's where I'm kind of at at the moment. Now, recently I have been studying a lot of work on the ego, remaining present, really trying to get to grips with mindfulness, uh, what's actually, ha actually happening in the present moment and how that relates to your sense of fulfilment. So in a sense, I've sort of sensed that I've moved up another rung on this, on this ladder. And then you go back to your notes that you've made on previous grand masters or gurus that have written great books, uh, Enlightenment, and you tr compare, you, you cross-reference, you look at, say, what someone like Napoleon Hill is saying compared with someone like Wayne Dyer, or Eckhart Tolle, or, you know, whoever it is, you're comparing and digesting and sort of putting all these facts together. And you eventually come up with a sort of a, try to come up with, to make peace with all of this so it still works. Now, as I was doing my studying on remaining present and addressing the role of the ego in our lives, I thought, oh no, I'm doing part two of the Neville Goddard series on imagination, manifesting your goals or dreams or desires. Am I now going to have to go back and change the way that I was thinking before? Now, luckily, ladies and gentlemen, the, the, what's happened is that actually I haven't. Um, I'm going to share very quickly with you now, for, for those of you out there, what it means to be present, what it means to have a goal or an imagined scenario in the future, how you can blend these two together, and through the teachings of Neville Goddard, use your wonderful imagination. And then the next set of videos I'm going to be doing soon, we're going to be looking at the role of the ego and remaining present and how it still relates to having an ambition. Because it's, it's good to have an ambition as long as it doesn't control your life in a way that makes you unhappy, ultimately. So first of all, while you're sat watching this video, you may be wondering, well, I don't exactly know what you mean about being present, Tony. So we're going to do a quick uh, example now. On this table here, I have this beautiful flower, which I've actually brought in from the garden. And it is absolutely a, a begonia, um, a, a beautiful plant. It's been a bit beaten by the elements outside, but what I want you to do right now is two things. First of all, as you're watching this video, I just want you to pause. And I want you to pick out one sound that you can hear in your immediate environment that's quite quiet that you can just focus on. I can hear birds. Secondly, a quick scan of your body and find an area maybe where there's a bit of tension. I can feel tension in a leg here and I can feel tension in my hands. Third thing, just have a look at this flower. In just for a few seconds I want you to lose yourself in the beauty, serenity and peace that that flower is displaying to you. Absolutely incredible. Look at those colours, tiny little hairs on the leaves. Wow. Now, you've just experienced a present moment, being present, and it's incredibly refreshing. <clears throat> that is the present moment, which is completely different from this type of scenario where you're sat thinking, oh, when am I going to reach my goal? I'll be happy when I reach my goal, then I've, then I've made it, then I'm fulfilled, then I've got to that point where I can say to other people, I'm Tony Mallet, and I've achieved whatever it may be. Aren't I in a better situation than you are? Now you really have to stop right now and analyse your ambitions and goals, which are all fine, they're all good to have, but understand that they are already within you now. Okay, if you can imagine something, you can fall in love with that idea, you already have everything you need to fulfil that ambition. The danger when you lose touch with being present and actually being alive as a human being is when that becomes so important that you're everywhere but present. Okay, so this great secret to life is it's great to have imagination and vision, but just be aware that it's this that counts. 
All right? You only ever have this moment. And for those viewers out there that still think, well, nah, I'm not buying into this idea, let me ask you this question. Let's, uh, I want you to imagine a goal or dream or an ambition. Just picture that in your head, whatever it may be, a career promotion, job, a uh, new partner, uh, the new car, whatever it is that's in your mind now is your imagination. Let me ask you this question. Where is that? And you'll probably say, well, it's in the future. There is no future. There is no past. They're just constructs inside your wonderful mind. You only ever have now. Oops, it's gone. The next now. Oops, it's gone. If you cannot feel fulfilled and happy and at one right now, then you never will because you only ever have now. And that car, that job, that person, that career, that ambition or goal, you too will only ever experience in the now. Now, when you really get your head around this, it's quite profound. So going back to Neville Goddard, let's see what Neville Goddard says about the imagination. And actually this, this part two of this video links beautifully these two pieces together. So let's go through these uh, points, uh, carrying on from the last video. Neville Goddard says, every day it's your purpose, your role to feel how wonderful it is right now. Right now, how wonderful it is, wherever you are, how wonderful it is. Find that, even in the hardest situations, if you dig deep enough, you will. And it will then become more of your reality. So right now I'm filming for you. Uh, I'm not making any money from filming this video. Uh, I'm not thinking to myself, well, it's going to get me to a goal. It will make X, Y or Z happen. No, 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 no. I'm trying to remain present. I'm right in this moment loving what I'm doing, which is sharing information. That's what I love to do. So he says, every day feel how wonderful it is now. Now, even if that is your goal that you're starting to think about, imagine it happening now and how wonderful that would feel now. This is great. Desire contains the answer or the result for that image. Your desire within that seed contains the answer or the result. That is really, really powerful. So if you have a desire, and ambition is fine, that's good. If you can see and feel that, there is also the answer towards making you get closer to that. Know that your desire exists in your imagination. And it will come, it will arrive, it will manifest in the outside world. Powerful, powerful information. A lot of people ask me, uh, about, well, that's all well and good, but how can I stay present now and be focusing on my goal? Stay present now. Well, yeah, how can I do that? Well, this, the great way to do this is just to act in every now in the fullest way that you possibly can. So let's say you're washing up uh, the plates during after dinner and you're looking out into the garden or you're just washing up, looking into, say, the foam of the bubbles the, uh, that you wash the washing up liquid. You can find a moment of wonderful, focused, present, uh, gratitude in that moment. You can if you uh, dig deep enough and, and everything sort of freezes and you just get this sense of uh, ease and flow, ease and flow. Now this is great, Neville Goddard says imagination is a bit like a boomerang because you have in your imagination this image the boomerang flies out into the sky and just like a boomerang does it takes an arch through the sky and then it arrives back to you. So when you imagine, imagine that boomerang being thrown out into the sky and taking a curve, it's going to come back to you somehow. You've got to imagine that whatever it is that you picture for the ideal uh, way of serving the world and being yourself and filling that desire, that, that, that God seed, if you like, that's inside you, is to imagine that you've already got it. And always say this word, it's inevitable. You know, if I'm a dancer and I'm great at dancing and in every now moment I just keep working on being a great dancer, it's inevitable that there's going to be another now moment that will move on from that and another, another, until eventually I reach my goal. But all the time bringing back the focus to the now. This is great, Neville Goddard says, you need to forget appearances. What do I mean by that? Well, appearances, things around you, maybe that might be distracting you, uh, forget seeing those as limitations. So let's say, for example, your bank account is low, 
you don't have many friends, you haven't got connections, uh, the environment's a little bit hostile, not very conducive, you've got to forget those and go within. This is where all the power is. And just forget about the limitations and start thinking creatively in the present moment, how can I right now act in moving things forward constructively? This is great, Neville Goddard says, sleep, go to sleep knowing that your vision is true, your dream is true. If you go to sleep with that idea in your head, incredibly powerful. We have four more key points here. The moment you contemplate something, you become the very thing. That's a powerful statement. The moment you contemplate something, you become the very thing. Wow. I'm contemplating that now. That's such a powerful statement. Number two, I urge you to dream nobly. Now, this is a quote from Neville Goddard. Just, just check this out. It's just such poetic, great, great language and use of literature. I urge you to dream nobly. Your dream may seem impossible, but I want you to wear it like clothes. And you have to persist until you fulfil that goal. Wear it like clothes. Powerful. Number three. Appearance is simply a hidden continuity which came to the surface. Appearance is simply a hidden continuity which came to the surface. So what does that mean? Well, appearance means something that you actually manifest or you see in front of you, but it's simply a hidden continuity which came to the surface. So I think what he's needing there is that inside your head you could be thinking of, uh, you're continuing that continuity of thought or process, um, and eventually it becomes an appearance. Appearance is simply a hidden continuity which came to the surface. So again, it's the idea of coming from within to the out, not the other way around. So to reach your goal and be that ideal person you wish to be, you first have to, in the present moment, build that uh, person up and then it will become an appearance. And the last point, this, this is, this, I love this, listen to this. This is another Neville Goddard quote. Thought, in any case, is never original. Thought itself is complete, and therefore, every thought is divine plagiarism. Wow! Thought, in any case, is never original. Thought itself is complete, and therefore, every thought is divine plagiarism. So, the idea being that if, if you're writing a book, say, no one ever writes a completely original book because authors will always steal little ideas or touch on other ideas from other authors or books. So whatever thought it is you're having about your goal or dream, it's not actually completely original. Um, it's already complete. It's already in place. All right? So you're simply you've almost, uh, it's a memory almost, you're, you're putting an aspect of that out, but it's already complete. So in that sense, every thought is divine plagiarism. It's already contained within that divine um, sphere, if you like. That's powerful because it kind of hints that uh, you're not alone and it's not yours to have. You're channeling what's already there. And my recent studies have really led me into, the, into a wonderful way of looking at life now. Instead of Tony here being this Tony, flesh and blood, um, this kind of like, I very, very often used to go around saying to people, I'm a spiritual being in a physical shell. I've changed that whole way now of looking at life. Now I actually look at it this way. Tony has come from the universe, the spiritual realm, if you like, that universal spirit. He's come from that domain and he's visiting around here so that that, that first cause, that spiritual universal domain, is experiencing what it's like to be on this planet and to be doing things. So, you know, I'm, again, I'm not completely original. I've, 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 I'm an aspect of that wider world. We're getting a bit deep here, but that's maybe in the next set, set of videos. But it changes my old way of talking, where I say, oh, you know, I put it out there and the universe delivered. Well, 
that's a misnomer now in those steps of awareness I talked about. Now I've had to change that and say, no, that's not true at all. That, that's kind of like, well, the universe is over there. Here's Tony with his goal and the universe is going to deliver if I do all of these things. But I'm having to change that perspective and that level of awareness. Now you see, when you change your level of awareness, everything in your outside world changes. But you don't go around and boast about this or force other people to think like you do because that's the ego uh, kicking in again. You can inspire and you can share, but then really it's up to people how they find their way to finding this great truth. So again, oh, the universe provided, the universe delivered just on my command. I've replaced that now with I'm an aspect of the universe that's experiencing itself through Tony and as I grow and as I become more present and more aware, so too does the universe. And the easiest way to explain this for all of you musicians out there is that when you do compose music or an artist indeed, anything that's creative, artists talk about this channeling experience. They forget thinking about themselves. They are this operating system that's literally channel channeling energy. And you do get that feeling that, that all that is, the universe, is experiencing that through you. So it's almost like there's two of you there. It's, it's, it's interesting. But I think I need to study a bit more on the ego and being present before I present you with those sets of videos. Well, maybe in a few weeks' time, we need to finish Neville Goddard work, which by no means, as I say, conflicts with the idea of being present and what it means to be fulfilled and uh, whole. I hope you find this video interesting and uh, informative. Please do leave a comment uh, or subscribe uh, because we've got so much more coming uh, and there's a lot more videos on our YouTube page where you'll see Mike Hendricks and myself sharing empowering information to help you. It really is about serving and sharing because again another great spiritual truth, we are all one, would you agree? We are all one and the quicker we get to that uh, perspective, I think the better for everybody and the planet itself. So, wow, you know, great stuff. Tony Mallet signing out for the Think to Thrive team. I will see you again in video number three in the Neville Goddard study course. Cheers to your awesome, huge, wonderful success. Tony Mallet signing out.